Welcome back to my video series on machine learning with Scikit-Learn. In the previous video, we discussed the famous IRIS dataset and loaded it into Scikit-Learn. We learned some important machine learning terminology, such as features, response, observations, regression, and classification. And finally, we discussed Scikit-Learn's four key requirements for working with data. In this video, I'll be covering the following. What is the k-nearest neighbors classification model? What are the four steps for model training and prediction in Scikit-Learn? And how can I apply this pattern to other machine learning models? Let's first do a quick review of the IRIS dataset that I introduced last time, since we'll be using this data when training our model. There are 150 observations, and each observation represents an iris flower. There are four features, represented by the first four columns of data, which are the sepal and petal measurements for each iris. And the response variable is the species of each iris, shown in the fifth column. Because our response variable is categorical, this is known as a classification problem. Before I introduce the k-nearest neighbors classification model, let's first talk about how we as humans might approach this task. Specifically, how might we predict the species of an unknown iris given its measurements? When looking at the data, we might notice that the three iris species in the dataset appear to have somewhat dissimilar measurements. If that's the case, we would hypothesize that the species of an unknown iris could be predicted by looking for irises in the data with similar measurements and assuming that our unknown iris is the same species as those similar irises. The process I just described is similar to how the k-nearest neighbors classification model works. The steps of k-nearest neighbors, or KNN, are as follows. First, you pick a value for k, such as 5. We'll talk in the next video about how to choose this value. Second, the model searches for the five observations in the training data that are nearest to the measurements of the unknown iris. In other words, the model calculates the numerical distance between the unknown iris and each of the 150 known irises and selects the five known irises with the smallest distance to the unknown iris. Note that Euclidean distance is often used as the distance metric, but other metrics can be used instead. Third, the response values of the five nearest neighbors are tallied and whichever response value is the most popular is used as the predicted response value for the unknown iris. Let's look at a few visualizations to make this algorithm more clear. First, we have some example training data, which is not the iris dataset in this case. You can think of this as a dataset with two numerical features represented by the x and y coordinates. Each point represents an observation, and the color of the point represents its response class, which is red, blue, or green. Next, we have a KNN classification map in which the k value is 1. The background of the diagram has been colored red for all areas in which the nearest neighbor is red, colored blue for all areas in which the nearest neighbor is blue, and colored green for all areas in which the nearest neighbor is green. In other words, the background color tells you what the predicted response value would be for a new observation depending upon its x and y features.
if a new point was right here, for example, its predicted response class would be green because its nearest neighbor is green. Finally, we have a KNN classification map in which the K value is 5. You can see that the boundaries between colors, known as decision boundaries, have changed because more neighbors are taken into account when making predictions. The predicted response for a new observation here is now blue instead of green because four of its five nearest neighbors are blue. The white areas, by the way, are areas in which KNN can't make a clear decision because there's a tie between two classes. As you can see, KNN is a very simple machine learning model, but it can make highly accurate predictions if the different classes in the dataset have very dissimilar feature values. Anyway, let's actually use KNN with the IRIS dataset in scikit-learn. In the previous video, we learned how to load the IRIS data from the datasets module of scikit-learn, and then we stored the features in X and the response in Y. Let's quickly verify that X and Y have the appropriate shapes. We can see that X is a two-dimensional array with 150 rows and four columns, as expected. Y is a one-dimensional array with length 150, since there's one response value for each observation. When loading your own data into scikit-learn, make sure to meet the four key requirements of input data that I outlined in the previous video. Now let's begin the actual machine learning process. Scikit-learn provides a uniform interface to machine learning models, and thus there's a common pattern that can be reused across different models. The first step in this pattern is to import the relevant class. In this case, we import kneighbors classifier from sklearn.neighbors. Scikit-learn is carefully organized into modules such as neighbors so that it's easy to find the class you're looking for. The second step in the scikit-learn pattern is to instantiate the estimator. What does that mean? Well, scikit-learn refers to its models as estimators because their primary role is to estimate unknown quantities. This process is called instantiation because we're creating an instance of the kneighbors classifier class. We have now created an instance of the kneighbors classifier class and called it knn. In other words, we now have an object called KNN that knows how to do K nearest neighbors classification and is just waiting for us to give it some data. Before we move on, there are three important notes about instantiating the estimator. First, it doesn't matter what you name the estimator object. I tend to choose a name that reflects the type of model it represents, though you might choose to call it EST short for estimator, or CLF, short for classifier. Second, notice that I specified the argument 
n neighbors equals 1. That is how we tell the KNN object that when it runs the k nearest neighbors algorithm, it should be looking for the one nearest neighbor. n neighbors is known as a tuning parameter or a hyperparameter, which we'll talk more about in the next video. Third, note that there are other parameters for which I did not specify a value, and thus all of those parameters are set to their default values. By printing out the estimator object, we can see the default values for all of those parameters. Thankfully, Scikit-Learn provides sensible defaults for its models so that you can get started with a new model without researching the meaning of every parameter. Let's move on to the third step, which is to fit the model with data. This is the model training step in which the model learns the relationship between the features and the response, though the underlying mathematical process through which this learning occurs varies by model. I simply use the fit method on the KNN object and pass it two arguments, the feature matrix X and the response vector Y. This operation occurs in place, which is why I don't need to assign the results to another object. The fourth and final step is to make predictions for new observations. In other words, I'm inputting the measurements for an unknown iris and asking the fitted model to predict the iris species based on what it has learned in the previous step. I use the predict method on the KNN object and pass it the features of the unknown iris as a Python list. It's expecting a NumPy array, but it still works with a list since NumPy automatically converts it to an array of the appropriate shape. Unlike the fit method, the predict method does return an object namely a NumPy array with the predicted response value. In this case, the k nearest neighbors algorithm using k equals 1 predicts a response value of 2. Scikit-learn doesn't know what this 2 represents, so we need to keep track of the fact that 2 was the encoding for Virginica, and thus Virginica is the predicted species for the unknown iris. As you might expect, this predict method can be used on multiple observations at once. In this case, I'm going to create a list of lists called x new, which contains two new observations. When I pass x new to the predict method, it again gets converted to a numpy array, this time with a shape of 2 by 4, which is interpreted as two observations with four features each. The predict method returns a numpy array with values 2 and 1, which means that the prediction for the first unknown iris was a 2, and the prediction for the second unknown iris was a 1. Let's say you wanted to try a different value for k, such as 5. This is known as model tuning, in which you're varying the arguments that you pass to the model. Note that you don't have to import the class again. You just instantiate the model with the argument n neighbors equals 5, fit the model with the data, and make predictions. This time, the model predicts the value 1 for both unknown irises. One of the things I love about Scikit-Learn is that its models have a uniform interface 
which means that I can use the same four-step pattern on a different model with relative ease. For example, I might want to try logistic regression, which, despite its name, is another model used for classification. I simply import logistic regression from the linear model module, instantiate the model with all of the default parameters, fit the model with data, and make predictions. This time, the model predicts a value of 2 for the first unknown iris and a value of 0 for the second unknown iris. Of course, you might be wondering which model produced the correct predictions for these two unknown irises. The answer is that we don't know because these are out of sample observations, meaning that we don't know the true response values. As we talked about in the first video, our goal with supervised learning is to build models that generalize to new data. However, we often aren't able to truly measure how well our models will perform on out of sample data. Does that mean that we're forced to just guess how well our models are likely to do? Thankfully, no. In the next video, we'll begin to discuss model evaluation procedures, which allow us to estimate how well our models are likely to perform on out-of-sample data using our existing label data. These procedures will help us to choose which value of k is best for k and n, and to choose whether k and n, or logistic regression, is a better choice for our particular task. In the meantime, I've linked to a few resources that might be helpful to you. First is the Nearest Neighbors section of the Scikit-Learn User Guide. It can help you to understand the available Nearest Neighbor algorithms and how to use them effectively. Also worth reviewing is the class documentation for KNeighbors Classifier. It's useful to become familiar with the structure of the class documentation, since all classes are documented in the same manner. All of the parameters and their default values are listed at the top and described directly below. This is often followed by usage notes brief examples, and the methods and their parameters. Occasionally, there are also longer usage examples at the bottom of the page. I've also linked to the user guide and class documentation for logistic regression. Finally, I've linked to this post from my blog, in which I've linked to 15 hours of videos associated with the book An Introduction to Statistical Learning, my favorite book for introducing machine learning. This video from chapter 2 discusses K nearest neighbors, and these two videos from chapter 4 introduce logistic regression. Just be aware that because logistic regression is an extension of linear regression, it may be hard to follow these two videos if you are not already familiar with linear regression. As always, it's been a pleasure sharing this lesson with you, and I look forward to your comments and questions. Please subscribe on YouTube if you'd like to keep up with this series. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.